all right guys welcome back to the channel i get a lot of questions asking how i have set the tuning up on my 72 volt bike so today i pulled out two of them we got the super 73 using a dd45 and we have the kona wozo using the bbs hd that's going to be the one we focus on today that's the one i get the most questions about um, so i already have this plugged in as you can see um, and here is the phase run just go ahead and look at the screen, change the zoom, you see it clearly. All right, so we already have this set up now, how I have it tuned. I'm just gonna go through some of these settings here. So I have the max current of the battery set to 75 amps and the max regen set at 40. This is not applicable to the BBS HD since it's clutched and doesn't have regen. Um, these settings here are all the default settings for the phase runner, minus I have the hull sensor with fault to sensorless on. Uh, I have the max power set at 4750 and the max phase current set at 96 amps. Um, this is not possible. You will hit a over limit on the phase amps if you're not using the proper field weakening. Um, using the field weakening lowers the initial phase amps and allows it to run that much power. Um, this is just a workaround that I found and personally use. The virtual electronic freewheeling is something that I've set up to keep some of the on off throttle transitions smoother. As you can see, I have no torque ramping. I just uh, have that tuned to basically nothing. So it gives me instant power. This could be tuned as your preference if you want something a little bit smoother. However, for me, if I press the throttle, you know, I expect the throttle to go that, to that point. So we're gonna scroll on over to the advanced setup tab. Now here's where you can really, you know, start tuning your individual bike. All right, so this is the secondary screen here under the advanced setup tab. And as you can see here, you can actually tune quite a bit of the throttle settings on how the phase runner reacts. Um, we don't have to worry about the brake voltage since we're not using any uh, regen braking or uh, motor braking. So the start and max voltage, this is gonna be the range of throttle that your cycle analyst sends to the BBS HD. So this, these numbers are gonna correlate with how you have your cycle analyst set up. Uh, the throttle deadband voltage at 0.10, you could think of this as the change of rate. So if you're cruising and your throttle's at 1.25 and you go to 1.3, it's gonna make a change. Now, if you hit a small bump in the road, this might be the type of small voltage change you see. You may or may not want the bike to respond to such small changes. It might make the bike jittery and cause some issues. Personally, I found 0.10 voltage in the deadband to be perfect, it gives me a nice smooth feel without you know hitting bumps and having the throttle you know come on so um, the next thing that we're going to look at is essential to start you can tune this to your liking this is if the motor faults the sensors it will default to the essential list and this is how much amperage it'll apply to get the motor spinning to see the hall sensors so these are the settings i use although like i said i, I actually if you look at the basic setup menu I'm using hall sensor for the motor position type with fault two sensorless. So this is gonna be it for the screen here. Now we're gonna scroll over to the cycle analyst. I'm gonna actually go to the bike for that versus using the software. So I'm gonna stop it. All right guys, now we're over to the cycle analyst. As you can see, this is the main display page. So if we wanna enter the setup menu, we're gonna press and hold the left button. There. So the first option is the setup speedometer menu. So you're going to configure the first tire tire size of the bike. Uh, this is in circumference, so you're going to have to figure that out. But I mean, it's using a one pole. We're using a single magnet on the spoke, so it's one pole. This is for your, your battery. You're going to set up how many uh, cells you have in series, so it's going to ask you. We can go through this. So battery volts. Uh, this is set up to use battery A only. Lithium ion. 20S, so this is the how much voltage. This is how much capacity. This is gonna be how many cells you have in parallel. I'm using four amp hour cells and 5P. That's how I got the 20 amp hours. That's the voltage cutoff at 64 volts. And boom. Okay, so now we're gonna go to throttle in. So the bike when it's in setup is not gonna operate. So as you can see, I have the throttle here. Back up a little bit. And just as I push it, you can see the voltage change, but we have a little bit of dead space in there. So we get up to about 94, and the throttle starts becoming active. And we 
press and you can see we have a little bit of at the very end it's reading full right there so basically you want to program it so the throttle has enough room through the entire range so i give myself a little bit of leeway in the very front of it and then we have that so you're gonna you know depending on your throttle and the voltage into the bike you're gonna have to tune this so we can press and hold it now this brings us through the actual throttle. So this is passed through. That means the throttle is passing through here, through the cycle analyst into the phase runner itself. So this is acting as the actual computer or the controller modifying a throttle if we allow it. So we're gonna pass that. So this is a zero threshold. So this is how when I press the throttle and I had that little bit of delay, I could actually lower this to the minimum voltage. Um, so I could bring this down to say 0.85, and as soon as I touched it, it would start reading 1%. However, I have it set to 0.9. This works for me. Now this is a full throttle voltage. So this is when the throttle hits 4.25. That's when it's reading to 99 or 100%. Again, this is gonna be tuned on your throttle and the voltage of your bike. Now these numbers are important later on, so. And then this is if the voltage goes over this number, it's gonna set the throttle high voltage. You can use the cruise control on the bike. I don't, uh, for the riding I do, it's not needed. So we're gonna skip that. All right, so now we're back to the main screen. As you can see, how I told you, the 0.9, will roll through it very slow. As soon as it goes past that, you see the voltage start going up. So you can, that's how you can configure your individual throttle, depending on which one you're using, to the cycle analyst. Now the next screen is gonna be throttle out. So this is this is going to matter uh, what we have programmed into the cycle panel or the yeah, to the phase runner. Excuse me, sorry about that. Too many words. So this is the voltage that's outputting, depending on where the throttle is. So now this is using the percentage of throttle that we programmed elsewhere to control the throttle that this is outputting into the phase runner and the DVS HD. So from here we have 0.9 to 4.25. Set the light and it's fixed in. We can come back over to the computer, and as you see, our input voltage starts at 1 and goes to 4.25. So we have that 0.10 voltage before it does anything in the beginning, and then 4.25 is the high. So you can actually misconfigure these and never get full power. So in my case, the output voltage does hit 4.25, and that will be max. And then we have the 0.1 voltage error in the very, or excuse me, the leeway in the very beginning before it does anything. So you know, it's very important to make sure these match up because that's what it's going to use for the output of power. You can configure this. So I could make this point or, you know, one volt all the way up to 4.25. This is how I have it set up. I don't have any speed limit. I don't have any power limit. This is the pass. So this is going to be your pass configuration, which this doesn't change. Um, it's still going to use the 24 poles. We can go through this really quick. So basic pass, 24 poles, two wire, and it's reversed. So that's pretty simple, that's not going to change. Here's something that is going to change if you're using 72 volts. Uh, you'll notice in the manual that the VBS HD combination with the phase runner and cycle analyst technically does not support 72 volts. So if you do go this way, you'll notice that you'll get quite a bit of, it's very aggressive when you're, you know, go to a dead stop throttle and then you start pedaling again amount of power that it injects to the motor is too much and it's very unsmooth. So what I've done is I've actually changed mine to be throttle based. So if we click this here, you'll notice instead of basic power, it's just basic throttle. What this does is actually instead of outputting a specific wattage, this is outputting a throttle that I have pre-programmed. So we'll go to the next one. So this is the start level. This is how much the maximum I have the aux switch will be. So in my case, 15% is going to be the maximum amount of throttle that the pass can apply to the system. And then this here is how much percent versus the RPM scale. So as I pedal and input higher RPM cadence, this is going to scale that 15%. So as I pedal and if my cadence RPM goes up high enough, it'll actually increase that 15% that you've seen and I can get all the way up to 45, 50%. So I can actually get more than the 15%. And this is the way that I found that makes it the smoothest. This is the start threshold. So this is the time in between the poles in order to get it to start. 
that stop. This allows me to get the bike moving and then pedal a little bit slower to keep the pass active. This is for the temp sensor, which you all have done. This should be configured as a 10K for Mr. Um, so right now, this is in Celsius, it's 29.3 degrees. Uh, this is for if you have an aux analog controller. This is for the digital, this is what I was explaining earlier. I'm gonna switch, sorry, as you can see here. This is if you had an e-brake or if you were using the regen brake, which the BBS HD doesn't have. This is for the shunt, you shouldn't have to mess with this. And then this is if you have custom presets. So now we'll be done unless you want to set up your custom display. So there you go. The last screen will show you the mileage, which you can reset. I've reset it since I put this new battery in so I can keep track of how many miles I have on this specific battery on this bike. Um, but now you'll see that we're back to the main screen. And if we apply a little bit of throttle here, you'll see that the I can just put 18 watts or so if I want. It's very smooth. I don't have any crazy, you know, jolt of power. The bike is very smooth. So this is what I found personally works perfect for me. Uh, I don't have any issues. It's been working this way now for I think about three, 400 miles uh, and only about 100 on this high power copper battery. But this is a great setup. Um, again, you have to use the field weakening to run that much power I found or you'll get faults. But using the configuration that I just displayed in this video here, uh, if you have the pack for it and you have the steel gear and the chain, you should have no problems having uh, quite a bit of fun on the bike. Like I said, this thing will do wheelies on command under 15 miles an hour, capable of doing over 45 miles an hour. So, I'm off the bike. Hope, hopefully this video helps somebody. I know it's not perfect. I might have messed up a couple of things. Uh, if I have, you can point them out and I'll come back and correct them. But this is what I've been using. I am no, I don't work for these guys. I'm just an enthusiast you know, trial and error, figuring things out. And this is what's worked for me and gave me uh, the best experience. So again, if you guys use this setup, let me know, give me some feedback. If you have some tips on how to make it better, I'm all ears. We're, you know, this is a hobby and we all look out for each other. So anyways, thanks for watching the video and have a good day.